cabinets in order. I need to get the play field caught up to it. So this play field looks pretty good. It's got some issues. I'll go over what they are. I'll go over the trade-offs. I'll, I'll go over into detail about a lot of things here uh, to the best of my ability. I don't have a script. Um, first things first, it's got a lot of ground in dirt in the shooter lane. This concerns me because I know I can only sand this so far before it gets in a weird shape or it just starts looking trenched out. So I can't only go so far. But another thing I know is I hate the look of a painted shooter lane. I don't mind a candied one, but if you've ever seen these shooter lanes where people paint like these triangular patterns, it's like, it almost looks like a, I don't know, a backgammon table or something. Maybe it's like they make this dark triangle, then they make this lighter triangle, then they make this darker triangle, and it's like, you're not, it, it, you're not fooling anybody. It just looks like it's been painted. So I don't like that look. I want to make sure I just candy this. So I'll get it sanded as clean as I can. I'll candy it best I can. If you look hard enough with a magnifying glass, you might still see some of that ground and dirt, but I'll take that all day long over a misshapen shooter lane or one that looks completely fake, you know, just completely fake. So we'll deal with that. So that's one concern. It has some ground in dirt and some ramp flap wear in some other areas. Some of them I will address, some of them I won't uh, because they'll be covering. It's not because I'm lazy, but it's just this has a really strange colorway to it. Uh, there's this, I, I, would, I would say it's like a, a lavender gray color, but where it fades it almost looks like a sky blue. And so you can see on this play field where some areas have been covered by the ramp and the ball in the the ball guide tabs, it's real purple looking. And then in the exposed areas or where the bulbs are, it's kind of blue. I'm gonna leave that alone because that would involve masking every bit of this off and just repainting this entire area. And I wouldn't mind doing that if I absolutely had to and we had some serious wear. But in the name of some items that are just kind of sun faded or, or faded by the 20 some years of it being used. I don't see any value in doing that because it's gonna be covered once I assemble it again. I'd rather take that effort and time and put it to use somewhere else because this is a lot of work as it is. So for that reason, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use that time to cut a hole right here and install a drop target and paint that appropriately. Uh, I think you know, it's a sample game feature, but it, it, it's a really good upgrade for your average everyday Dirty Harry to install that now missing drop target. So I'll do that and that'll be, you know, I'll use that time more wisely. People are always ask me about colors. You know, oh, what's the, I get these emails all the time. Oh, what's the paint code for Earthshaker cabinet? What's the paint code for this? What's the paint code for that? There is no paint code. Uh, you, you mix and match all these colors by eye. There's no paint code. You, you figure it out as you go because like this, let's say I want to match this. Well, which part of it do I want to match? Which one's the match? Is it the blue or is it the lavender? So in other words, am I matching what it looks like now or what it used to look like? You know, ideally, I guess you'd want to match what it used to look like, but you're never going to get in between all these little letters with all that. So you have to match what it looks like now. So it's it's too much to put into words. Uh, it's real hard to describe if you're not well versed in this stuff, but it's just kind of like a feeling or, or a knowledge. I just kind of know what I need to do when I'm gonna do it. But I will talk about this just since I brought that up. The Dirty Harry cabinet. These are the paints that it took to paint the Dirty Harry cabinet. And this and the whole, you know, obviously I didn't paint the whole cabinet, just what I repaired. So you have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 colors, 19 colors. Now keep in mind, I had to mix in every one of these colors. There was nothing in my paint cabinet that was like, oh yeah, that's it. So I had to tint and mix each one of these 19 colors. And then when you start talking about the effects, some of those effects that you see or maybe this color over top of this color, or this color fading into that color, or this color, you know. And so you can magnify, or you can multiply this by two. 
you know, it'd be like, what, 38 colors at, at a minimum. So that's why there's no paint codes, there's no secrets, there's nothing that anybody's gonna tell you to make you be able to do this. You just have to try, I guess. That's the only thing I can tell you, or, or just don't do it. Hire somebody to do it. But uh, anyway, that's the deal with that. So uh, I'm gonna get into cutting this drop target hole right here. That's gonna be the biggest uh, obstacle that faces me right now. Once I cut that hole and I get it nice and clean and hopefully I don't make a whole bunch of my work, I mean, a whole bunch of work myself, these do have the tendency to chip. The biggest issue with it is it has to be done from the back side to be accurate. And I wish I could come out from the top side, but I don't have any way to go out from the top side. Um, so that's going to be the biggest challenge. So I guess we'll start getting into that. I'm going to do that before I do anything because I want to get it out of my way. So what you see right here, maybe, let's see if I can get, get a better vantage point here. And I realize it's kind of scattered, but I got, oh, oh, these thoughts are kind of scattered, but I got stuff I want to get to, but I want to make sure I set the stage, so. I did that, right? So I have mapped out the drop target where it should be. Just roughed it in. All right. Okay. basic square cut out. It's not what we need yet. We're going to get there. And listen, you might think these methods are all wrong or primitive or whatever, but I don't want to do a lot of damage and have this thing chipping everywhere. I'm going to have to repaint a lot of stuff. So I know you can get a router and just oh, run around. But no. No. All right. So we got that. drop target in there, I can start uh, really shaping the whole cosmetically. But you gotta make sure I can get it down in there and that the dimples line up. Got the drop target mounted with the factory dimples. And we just kind of check it. All right, it works good. Now this isn't the final shape of the hole. I don't want you to think that. But I gotta just gotta make sure that it works, right? As long as this works, this is good. 
So if I knock it down, it's good. Let me check the automatic feature. Yes. All right, so it works, it's functional. It's lined up about right. That's why I have this straight line right here. I wanna make sure I stay within that straight line. Now I can really cut the proper shape. So I guess in theory, the proper shape for this is gonna be a, quite a bit larger than it is. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm gonna go quite that big. I feel like this is oversized, but I'm sure it's correct. But um, this would be the proper shape, which is much larger uh, than it is right now. So just leaving the drop target in place, kind of got to get a feel for how it would be best centered if uh, if I had, you know, an actual factory hole. So I'm just eyeballing this thing. And now I'm just going to make a small adjustment I want to check these measurements I think that'd be I'm just eyeballing it but I think that would frame it up perfectly and that's kind of what I want it to be it's perfect so that would be a half And the drop target fit, it couldn't really fit any better. And if you look at the wear, the way the wear goes, it's super straight. I mean, I think I did a better job this time than I did the, the first time. And I did fine then, it wasn't a problem. But, you know, once you do it twice, I, man, it went so slow. And I know that method that I use, I, I, there's going to be people, oh, you could have used a router, you could have done this and that. Trust me, you can't because it'll just... It'll just annihilate all around there, and then once whatever you have left is behind, if it was cut too big, you're screwed. If it was cut too small, you're gonna still wind up back in there doing it by hand, and if it chips all this stuff up, you're gonna have a whole lot of repaints. If you look at this, I could actually clear this and just move on. I'm not gonna do that, and I'm gonna paint the wooden border, and I'm gonna paint the black frame, but that's why I did it the way I did. It's to make sure that it gets a super clean, chip-free finish. And man, it's tough. And it takes a lot of thought process because the placement, the angle, all that's so important. I mean, if I would have this thing shifted a little bit, it'll look weird. It's gotta be perfect and you don't have anything to go by. So anyway, there it is. It looks good. And I'm, I'm not even gonna pretend like it's not that time. You know what time it is.